Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Yeah. <sighs> Is it fat phobic to want to lose weight, even though it has nothing to do with anybody else? I think we all know the obvious answer to that. Of course it is, dummy. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of clips where people proclaim that weight loss is fat phobic. I feel like some kind of weird hipster poet wearing this long sleeve black shirt. Um, I feel like I'm in some weird French art film that should be in black and white, and then it's just me sitting in the corner like puffing on a cigarette. <sighs> All right, enough screwing around. Let's dive right in with the applying of comb to mustache. Generally speaking, there's three kind of big buckets of reasons why someone might engage in intentional weight loss. Big buckets of reasons, um, okay. First is desirability, second, health, third, stigma. What do you mean, health? Um, why would losing weight be good for your health? <laughs> what are you talking about, doc? <laughs> you sound crazy right now. But at the end of the day, all of those are rooted in fat phobia in different ways. And Wanting to lose weight for your health is fat phobic or to not be stigmatized is also fat phobic okay seems like everything is fat phobic i guess a better question would be what isn't fat phobic is it uh fat phobic for me to take a vacation to the bahamas because i'd like to do that one day may i please go to the bahamas someday i wouldn't want to anger our fat overlords i also feel like i could be a mime I'll explain. First, desirability. That is kind of the most obvious when it comes to fat phobia. We currently live in a society that uplifts thinness, able-bodiedness, whiteness, cisness. Okay. <laughs> Does it uplift all those things? I don't know, man. Last time I saw some TV, it didn't look like it was uplifting any of those things. And this look on your face right now uh, perfectly encapsulates how I feel. Yeah, society does like to uplift fatness, whiteness. Oh, sorry, I was having a stroke. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, it, all this nonsense that was just bleh, falling right out of my mouth. You know, what? I'm going to have to agree with this look on your face, okay? Whatever you're trying to convey with this particular look... Uh, go ahead and sign me up. And heterosexuality as the things that are most desirable. Oh yeah, is that what's been on the TV lately? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what stations you're watching. <laughs> and so if you are wanting to lose weight in order to become more desirable, you are upholding a fatphobic beauty standard. Oh yeah? So wanting to look better is upholding a fatphobic beauty standard, and therefore, you are fat phobic, my friend. As well as, you know, white supremacy and all that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> right, so if you want to lose weight to look better, you're also upholding that. Uh... Did I swear to God these people grasp for straws? Trying to make connections to stuff that is not connected to other stuff all the time. Just to try to make their position seem more legitimate. Here's how sitting upright is racist. What, dude? Shut up. <laughs> what do you mean? See, back in the slave days, I used to make them lay down on the ground. So, uh, yeah, every time you sit up, you're, you're actually racist now for that. <laughs> so next is health. What we know is that weight is not a good indicator of someone's health, and also... Oh, we do know that? Oh, well, thank you for enlightening me, because I thought we knew the exact opposite of that. But you just confidently saying that that is the case, uh, that was enough to convince me. You're right. You're right. Weight is not an indicator of health. Screw everything else that I've ever seen in my entire life. A random person just said some stuff. Your health is not an indicator of your worth. Right. Your health is an indicator of y your health. Uh, <laughs> nobody said it was an indicator of your worth. You're projecting again. You guys are always like, it's not immoral to be obese. But, like, nobody even said that? Nobody brought that up? It's almost like if you're chilling with your friend and they're randomly just like, I'm not doing meth. I don't do meth at all, dude. I, I, I don't. Okay, uh, who, who the hell brought that up? What the hell? What are you talking about? Why would you randomly say that? Are you doing meth? Point being that nobody brought it up and you randomly just said it yourself. So that's clearly how you feel. I'm not immoral for eating a bunch. 
Okay, nobody said you were. Do you feel immoral for eating a bunch? Sounds like you feel that way. And it feels like you think that everybody else is judging you in a similar manner. You can have health and body related goals for yourself that are not about fat phobia and not about weight loss. So let me How? You just said it's fat phobic to try to lose weight to look good for health or so you don't have to deal with stigma. What other reasons could there be? Let me give you an example. You might decide that you have a goal of hiking a particular mountain in your area. Now you would be engaging in different types of movement in order to achieve that goal. You may or may not lose weight in doing that. And in fact, there's lots of fat mountaineers and hikers. <laughs> Are there lots of fat mountaineers and hikers, dude? Bruv, how high of a mountain can you climb if you're obese, dog? Let's be real. I mean, I used to be overweight myself, and I wasn't probably obese or morbidly obese. I was about 60 pounds overweight, and I was tired as hell all the time. What are you talking about? There was no mountaineering <laughs> in my future, dude. How many obese mountaineers do you know, dog? Third bucket reason is that you might be facing extreme fat phobia and anti-fat bias in your own life and you have personally mentally hit a wall where you can't deal with it anymore and so you decide to intentionally lose weight. Okay, that is also uh, invalid, apparently. That is actually the case with Roxanne Gay, who is very tall. They are like six foot or six one. And prior to their weight loss surgery, they would have been categorized as a super fat. So being a super fat and being that tall comes with a particular type of physical accessibility challenge as well as anti-fatness. And so for that reason, Roxanne Gay elected to have weight loss surgery. Okay, um, are we mad at that? Or is it okay this time? I don't know, man. The fat overlords are very picky. They pick and choose whatever they like. Sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not. So if I want to lose weight for health reasons, that's not cool. But if this chick gets weight loss surgery, that is cool even though she did it to get out of the stigma or whatever. But it's really important that if you still go through with intentional weight loss that you don't sacrifice fat liberation politics because otherwise it's still just fat phobia even if you're doing it for your mental health and accessibility. So if I lose weight but I continue to participate in fat liberation politics, then it's cool. Okay, all right, man. I've been making a list of all the ways um, I'm allowed to exist in this world and the things that I'm allowed to do or not do according to our fat overlords Next there is absolutely a difference between fat phobia and internalized fat phobia <laughs> Duh, <laughs> I think we all know that already <laughs> This isn't our first rodeo, okay? However, the difference is not simply about projection onto others. Oh I thought it was oh dang it I've been misinterpreting it this, this whole time. And projection onto yourself. There is a necessary precondition to experience internalized fat phobia that is that you must already be fat. Aw, dang it. Okay, well what about externalized fat phobia? Can I do that one? You cannot simply think you're fat. Because the internalized anything, right? Whether it be internalized misogyny, Internalized misogyny, internalized racism, or internalized fat. Dude, ugh. Dude, enough with this terminology, internalizing, externalizing, yada, yada, yada. Internalized racism or internalized fat. Dude, something either is or it isn't, okay? There's no internalized version of it. If people insulted you and you took it to heart and you started feeling bad about it, you must have identified with it. If it's not a legitimate insult, then don't identify with it. It's not rocket science. Phobia comes as a result of experiencing the harms of fat phobia and instead of analyzing and identifying the structures that oppress you, you individualize and internalize those experiences of oppression. Oh, so I need to identify the systems that are oppressing me and blame them instead of blaming myself for not losing the weight or whatever I see. We take the bad feelings and we push them out so we don't feel them, gotcha. And then attempt to make yourself into the good fat person who may- Can we do this with other stuff like drinking or drugs? Like if I'm going off the rails doing drugs, can I just blame the system for arresting people for doing drugs? 
and then it's not my fault. I'm like, dude, there's a whole system in place, literally, <laughs> to stop people from doing drugs. So therefore, this is systemic oppression and I don't have a problem. Makes themselves small, dresses appropriately, etc. Trying to make yourself thick. She mentioned the phrase, trying to make yourself small again, and saying like, don't do that. My question is, any of you watching this that are fat or used to be fat, did you ever try to make yourself small? Like, I understand not like sitting like this, you know, and taking up as much space as possible so that nobody else can sit on the bus bench or whatever. But like, how, how much effort could you put into trying to make yourself small? You can go like this and tuck it in a little bit, tuck the limbs in a little bit so you're trying to stay in your own seat. But other than that, what could you do? I remember one time that Fierce Fatty said that she used to use a small spoon um, to try to make herself look dainty, which is hilarious because if you have a tiny spoon, it's going to make you look bigger by comparison. What you would want to get is a big old ladle <laughs> and then you look all tiny in comparison. Even if you fail. Like I said in my last video, I'm going to be trying to make the next few videos a bit shorter so I have time to get ahead of the game here. We have time for one more clip. Let's take a look. All right, in this clip, she's going to be responding to this comment that says, I also think that if someone doesn't want to be plus size, that's their choice. I lost weight for my health. <laughs> what an ignorant comment. Am I right? Am I right? Well, fat phobia out the wazoo. Hopefully, Megs for fun will set them straight. <laughs> I can't believe she said that. Get dunked on, commenter. Oh, man. I bet they didn't expect her to go that hard, son. I love that as a response. Can we do that? Can we just blink um, while staring blankly? <laughs> is that a good retort uh, these days? I don't know, man. How low is the bar in society where just blinking at something that somebody says is considered a retort? Yeah, so like I told you all, uh, a proper diet and exercise can help you lose weight and be in good health. Yeah, and the many other benefits that I was talking about. Are you okay? Um, you're seeming to be having a stroke or something. Should I call an ambulance? Oh God, all right, I'm calling 911. Please be sure to leave a like on the video. It really helps the algorithm. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.